Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at the paper Tiny Stories, How Small Language Models Can Be and Still Speak Coherent English. So, um, so in this paper, um, they try to focus on uh, pre-training small language models to produce coherent text. And uh, one of the issues they highlight is how small language models when pre-trained on Wikipedia, C4, or uh, these corpora which are used to pre-train larger language models as well. Um, when the small language models are pre-trained with them, they don't really yield coherent text beyond a few words, right? Uh, so for that, they try to um, have a data set, which basically just preserves the essential elements of language. Um, and to do this, they basically have a data set which con consists of words, which only uh, three to four year olds can understand, right? And um, so this data set basically would have elements such as grammar, simple vocabulary, facts and reasoning, uh, but it wouldn't really be broad in terms of the domains it covers or the breadth and the diversity of it, right? So, um, so they posit that training your small language models with uh, this kind of a data set probably uh, strips away the pre-training data of its complexities of factual information and knowledge and uh, enables the smaller language models to generate uh, better coherent text. So uh, their data set is called Tiny Stories and they get this data set by prompting GPT 3.5 uh, and GPT 4. So, um, so basically they prompt uh, GPT 3.5 uh, with a prompt uh, that um, says that the words which need to be chosen for the story need to be familiar to a three-year-old child. They also have certain verbs which need to be incorporated in the story. And this is how they uh, generate diverse stories. And um, they also um, specify the format in which the story needs to read, right? Like having one dialogue, uh, whether it needs to have a bad ending, etc. And then GPT 3.5 basically comes up with a story for it. Um, they also have an instruction following variant where they have more instructions added, like they can have a summary of the story, uh, certain features, like whether there needs to be a twist in the story, whether there needs to be dialogue, etc. cetera. Um, and a sentence which needs to be included in the story, certain words which need to be included, and you can read the kind of uh, stories which GPT 3.5 generates. And um, they also use GPT 4 for evaluation as well, where um, they provide the prompt, the initial portion of the story, the completion of the story by this small language model, um, and then um, they have a prompt basically, which is asking GPT-4 to uh, give a general assessment of the story and also to grade the story. And GPT-4 basically comes up with um, scores for um, grammar, creativity, consistency, etc. So um, essentially what they do is instead of using uh, Wikipedia or C4 or other pre-training data, which consists of a lot of uh, factual information as well, uh, they have this simple data set which only consists of words which three to four year olds can understand and they train their smaller language models with this data right and um, so these are some of the results and they evaluate their language model um, using the gpt4 framework we saw earlier um, so you can see that uh, so these are the results right uh, I have higher score is basically better um, and they vary the hidden size and the number of layers. And you can see that um, like uh, for things like grammar, uh, even some even a transformer model with 64 uh, being the hidden size and two layer transformer is able to have um, better uh, score for grammar compared to creativity and consistency, saying that grammar probably is something which the model, which even shallow models can pick up on. Uh, whereas if you have to go to consistency, you basically need to have um, uh, deeper models, right? You need to have more number of layers. And also um, you need to have a certain hidden size to be able to get good scores on uh, consistency where 
uh, you continue the plot of the story right and these are some examples of the completions by the models which are trained on the tiny stories data set and um, gpt2 excel which is a billion parameters um, and you can see that, you know, like even these small models with 28 million parameters uh, have a more consistent plot, um, are more creative, and they stick to the story compared to uh, a model with like a billion parameters, uh, indicating the importance of having pre-training uh, data, which is uh, uh, more basic. And then you can also look at the uh, completions for, you know, like factual prompts. Uh, you have a prompt. So Alice was so tired when she got back home, so she went. And you can see that, like, the biggest of models provides uh, an answer which is not consistent with the context here outside. But uh, you have a 28 million model which is providing straight to bed, even a 2.5 million model which when trained on the right pre-training data is uh, able to produ uh, provide the right answer. You can see it across different types of prompts, like um, these are factual prompts, and then you also have reasoning prompts from the context, um, and also context tracking prompts. So you can take a look at all these, um, and then they look at the diversity of instructions, right? So they basically have, um, they have an original story which is generated from GPT 3.5 and they cut the story in the middle and they ask uh, the language model to generate 100 different stories and they want to basically measure how similar each of these stories are to the original story, how similar each of these stories are to the other 99 uh, generated stories by the language model and to do that they use the Rouge score and they basically um, plot the histograms of the Rouge scores and then you can see that uh, you basically have minimal overlap between the stories, uh, the hundred stories which are generated and the story and any other story in the uh, training data. So, and the story and the original story. So basically this says that the stories which are generated in such a way are, uh, uh, have a good amount of diversity in them. And they also look at the interpretability of the uh, different attention heads and the uh, feed forward layers. So they basically look at the um, attention heads, like for example, this is uh, head 13. They pick one attention head and they look at the um, attention pattern, right? And this I believe is just a uh, one layer transformer. So they look at the attention pattern and they can see that some of these attention heads, um, they are more uh, distance based attention, right? They pay um, attention to tokens which are which are at a fixed uh, distance from the current token. So you have these distance-based attention heads probably required for grammar. And then you have these semantic attention heads, right, where they pay attention to these heads, look at particular words. For example, these could be the main entities. So the, the attention is basically looked or plotted for this particular story where um, it's about a banana and then Lucy and Tom looking for it. So uh, so you can look at these uh, semantic attention heads which pay attention to banana, right? Um, and also some of them pay attention to uh, the main entities like Lucy and Tom. So these pay attention to the meaning of different words, right? So... Um, Models which are pre-trained on tiny stories are also interpretable in a certain sense. And they also look at the, uh, so if you recall, you have uh, a transformer basically has the attention head and then it has a feed forward network, right? Which, um, which basically they look at for interpretability here. So they look at the intermediate layer and they look at, they pick a random neuron in the intermediate layer and they look at the activation of the neuron. So they have around 100 stories which they um, uh, feed to the transformer. And for each of these stories, they're looking at the um, 
were the uh, they they are looking at the top stories which give the top activations and for a particular neuron they are looking at what kind of words give the top activations right in each story and here they find a common pattern that is each neuron pays attention to sort of similar uh, words like for example layer 7 they look at neuron 1 and they see that it's paying attention to pronouns neuron 2 in layer 7 is paying attention to some verbs right and neuron 54 is paying attention to main entities in these stories which are fed to the transformer but then when they look at uh, when they do a similar analysis on gpt excel um lay, say layer 13 neuron 1 they don't see a similar pattern right it pays attention to words but you can't have a common role for these words um similarly neuron 2 so um leading them to conclude that uh, the models which are pre-trained on tiny stories basically are more interpretable compared to uh, models pre-trained on large amounts of data like wikipedia etc then they basically look at the um, model size versus the flops where um, they for for a given amount of flops basically they select the model size which has the lowest validation loss right so um and then they uh, they look at the trend here and they find that this basically follows the polynomial scaling law which is uh, seen in larger language models um which the polynomial scaling law basically says that um um the optimal model size for a given amount of flops is proportional to the flops raised to some power alpha so this was the paper so to conclude they basically introduced this uh, data set tiny stories which consists of stories generated by gpt 3.5 um with words which a uh, 3 or 4 year old can understand and um in doing this they basically say they strip the data set uh, off of any uh cumbersome information about uh, different domains etc and yet they have these uh, basic uh, um tenets of language grammar consistency etc and by training your smaller language models with this data set you should be able to generate better coherent um um data compared to training it with uh larger amounts of uh, pre-training data um with data sets like wikipedia and c4 which have uh, a lot of uh diverse information and a lot of factual information embedded in them and they also introduce a new way of evaluating uh the generations by these language models essentially using gpt4 to give a score for uh, different facets of the generation such as grammar consistency plot etc